Today I'm working on the Samsung Modular Air Cooled Chiller. We got an error code E425. I'm gonna be replacing some inverter boards. If you want more information about this Samsung Chiller, today's video is gonna be covering E425, replacing some inverter boards, going through some troubleshooting. If you wanna learn more, check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technician. Check out, check out Samsung's website, www.samsunghvac.com. I got there channel down in the link in the description as well they've got some youtube videos that are pretty awesome and very instructional before we start the video hit the like button subscribe hit that bell thing so you know what i'm doing you're watching hvac tips for technicians i'm tad let's get started this is where the inverter boards were located this is the inverter side of this chiller and this side is my hydro controller side this is where my hydro module is and this is where my water pipes come in to my PHE, my plate type heat exchanger. I've got my old inverter boards here and I've got my new inverter boards in the boxes. I'm gonna take those out in a minute, but let's go over what E425 is. I've got my installation manual here and we've got E425 right here. It says phase reversal or phase failure. If you have got a brand new chiller install, and it says E425, then you may simply be able to switch two of the legs of the incoming power, and that may fix your issue. If that doesn't fix your issue, I'm gonna to explain to you what you may have to do and what you have to check to be able to fix this issue, okay? So let's take a look at the chill. All right, so this is where the main power comes in. You'll want to take your disconnect and turn it off or your breaker, whatever you have to turn the power off. And then you'll wanna take an Allen tool and you'll wanna loosen two of these legs of the power cause this is three phase. This is a 230 volt chiller, but it's three phase. And you'll want to just change one of these out, okay? And swap them. And that may fix your issue. My chiller has been installed for several years now. I think it's been here for about three years and I haven't been using it that much, and when I went to use it, it said E425. And I looked on the service manual, which I'll show you that before the video ends if you're interested. And what the service manual told me to do was that it, it could be that the power needs to be reversed. Two of the legs need to be reversed, okay? Or, right here, let me show you. You can just lift this up. This panel swings out of the way. Of course, you'll need to unplug these right here these go into the EMI boards. These are the EMI boards right here. And you can sh see that there's fuses, okay? And you've got a fuse in line with these three legs of power that come through this board and then they go into the inverter boards, okay? And these are filters. So they're electromagnetic interference filters. And you've got these fuses and you'll need to turn the power off. You'll need to isolate the board uh, means take the power leg off uh, on each side and then you'll need to use your meter and you'll need to ohm out these fuses, okay? One at a time. If you don't know how to do that, I'll drop a link in the description to a video on how to check fuses. But, but what I did was I reversed the power. That didn't work. So I put my legs back where they were. Then I came in here. I ohmed out each fuse to make sure there was no short, make sure the fuses were all good. And that means that I don't have to replace this board or this board. And if you don't have to reverse the legs and then you don't have to change these boards, then last but not least, you need to get an inverter checker. I will drop a link in the description to a good inverter checker. And that's what you need to do to check these inverter boards. That is the best option for you to figure out if your inverter boards are bad or if they're good. And you might not have two inverter boards that are bad. You may only have one bad inverter board. So you might not have to replace both of them. Uh, I was able to call tech support just to verify everything. I love Samsung tech support. My brother, Sean, helped me there. Thank you so much. And now I know that I need an inverter board. So I'm gonna replace the inverter board and we're gonna see what happens when we turn this chiller on. This is a page from the service manual. Take a moment, pause the video if you want. I'll kind of hold the camera out so you can see everything, but you can look at the judgment method. You can look at the cause of problem. Pause the video right there if you want, and let's get back to it. Got the new inverter boards unboxed, and we've got some thermal paste, 
and that right there goes on the back here so that we can make sure we dissipate the heat required so these new boards don't burn up. This is the existing board and you can see the residue of the thermal paste that was on there. Make sure that you put thermal paste on here. If you do not, these will not last long. I also took the plastic holders that are around the capacitors off of the old inverter boards and I placed them on the new ones before I install them, okay? So let's get these boards installed. Just make sure you got a Phillips screwdriver. You'll be all right. Thermal paste has been distributed evenly amongst the two inverter boards that I'm installing. I'll be installing one board here and one board here. There are four of these screws right here that hold the inverter board to the heat sink, okay? And you need to make sure that you don't over tighten them because you will crack or break this board. And it's very important that the inverter board and the heat sink mount flush, okay? Now this equipment has got a sub cooler right here. So it's taking that liquid refrigerant and it's running it here on the back of those inverter boards to keep it nice and cool, which I think is really nice. Okay, so we got both inverter boards installed correctly. Let's go over the wiring real quick. We got one compressor coming into this inverter board and then we've got one compressor coming into this inverter board. And then we've got the two white wires that go on this board come from this reactor and then these two white wires go to this reactor. So we got the reactor wires into our inverter board and then the white, brown, and the black from the EMI board go to this inverter and then same thing for this inverter. So we basically got input for our EMI boards into the inverter, our reactors into the inverter, and then from the inverter we go from to our compressor. So let's put it back together and plug these wires in, start it up and see what happens. All right, got the power on, AD00. We should not have E425 now. AD01, perfect. Now, let me go turn the chiller on. All right, turning my chiller on. On, it says my storage tank is 100 degrees. Got a couple modes, but we're gonna go for cool storage. And the temperature we're gonna do is 41 degrees. So let's go check the chiller and make sure it's running. Got the valves on for the pump. And there's the storage tank. So main pump is running, power is on. We'll go take a look at the chiller and then we'll watch this go from 100 to 41. All right, chiller is running. It's displaying A000. And you can see fans are spinning. All right, now let's just go inside and see how long it takes. And uh, I'll let you know as far as how many minutes it takes to cool that 100 gallon storage tank. This is a 10 ton modular air cooled chiller. It's been 10 minutes with the chiller running and the storage tank is now 52 degrees. So in 10 minutes, it took it from 100 or 96 degrees, what you saw, to 52 degrees. So that's pretty awesome. I'm assuming that within the next five minutes, it'll probably be at 41, which is amazing. So we're using that chiller, that chilled water for process cooling to run the dryer. We're dehydrating some peaches right now and then some tomatoes. Go check out my latest live video and you'll see that uh, for now. But this thing is awesome, absolutely awesome. I can push the monitor button and I can look at outdoor air temperature, uh, low pressure, high pressure, flow rate. You can convert that into gallons per minute so that you can see it if you want it displayed that way. Water outlet, water inlet, that's awesome. All right. Samsung tech support is great. Samsung support as far as warranty and parts is great. I ordered the chiller parts. I got the parts the same week and put the parts on and they fixed it. So I was able to look at the service manual and determine what the failure point was even without an inverter checker because I checked everything it could be 
and then there was only one other thing it could be, so ordered the inverter boards. Under warranty, can't beat that. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments what you learned. And if you don't have any questions to put in the comments, that's okay. Tell me who you are and tell me where you're from. Do not forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. And if you need help with your project, you need tech support, you need my phone number, go check out my membership levels. Click the join button, become a member, and let me know in the comments. Say, I joined, and I'll give you my email, and that'll lead to contact with me. Stay healthy, stay happy. This is Tad with HVAC Tips for Technicians reminding you, I'll keep you cool if you let me.